Hi people! Brini Maxwell here and today I'm here to help you get to know your chafing dish. Now the reason for that is that Mary Ellen needs to get one because she was shown up at a dinner for the Feast of St. Anthony a few months ago. It was so, absolutely mortifying. Yes, so she's asked me to help her suss out what she needs in a chafing dish. Well the first thing I want to know is why in God's name would they call it a, a, a chafing dish? The last thing I think of when I say chafing is a dish. Well, I'm not entirely sure, Mary Ellen, but we'll look into it for you, okay? All right. All right. I'm chafing right now. <laughs> well, thank you for letting us know. Well, you are my best friend. <laughs> yes, and so are they. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, the important thing to know about a chafing dish yes. is that you need to know what type of heat source you want for it. Okay. All right. Most chafing dishes use something called canned heat or sterno. And sterno uh, is a little pot, mm -hmm, little can. You open it up and you light it up and it gives you a nice little blue flame that keeps your food warm. And if you put a dollar under it, it'll forgive all your venial sins. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm not one of the Catholic faith, so I don't you know You brought up St. Anthony. What do you want? Well, you're the one who came to me. Oh, tell me about my chafing dish. All right. So, this chafing dish is a little different. Yes. This is my potpourri. Okay. Isn't it cute? It's just adorable. It's darling, isn't it? Yes. yes. Well, this uses an electric heat source. Okay. Right there. So, that plugs into the wall, and it has a little dial here, and you can set it to whatever level you want. Oh. And there's usually a way to adjust the temperature on a uh, uh, on a sterno heat uh, 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 unit as well on the, your chafing dish. You just slide the top back and forth and it regulates the size of the flame. So that is the heat source. Okay. Here in our case it's uh, electric. Now the next thing you need for your chafing dish is the water pan. And that sits right on there. Okay. You fill that up with water and that will help regulate the heat also. Oh. Because with, uh, with an uncontrolled heat source underneath your uh, food, it could just continue to heat up until it burns. It's like a, a big double burler. That's exactly what it is. A double boiler. <laughs> yes. So uh, that's the water pan for your chafing dish. The next thing you need is the dish for your food. And that sits right in there. Isn't that charming? Yes. Yes. And that's where you actually put the food. So we might put my Swedish meatballs in there. Katbuller. That's right. Kat Beef a la Lindstrom. <laughs> so that, uh, that's the food dish. That's Kat where that goes. Katbuller. Yes. And, uh, and you can do many different sorts of foods in here. Um, but now, do you cook in there or do you just put it done in there to keep it hot? You put it in there done. That's the whole idea of a chafing dish, is it's a serving utensil, not a cooking utensil. You know, it's amazing. It takes one dish to cook it and five to heat it. Anyway, so the last piece on a standard chafing dish is your lid, and that keeps things warm. Okay. So that is your chafing dish. Now, chafing dishes come in a variety of different styles, out of different materials. Um, you can get them very formal in sterling silver. This one is a little more casual for more casual entertaining. Just like shoes. Yes, exactly. That's an interesting comparison. Shoes and chafing dishes. Casual, <laughs> formal. All right, okay. Mosaic. Yeah, mosaic shoes. Well, the designs. <laughs> All right, okay. So, um, uh, you can even get them in disposable Disposable varieties. Disposable chafing dishes? Yes, they make them for the catering industry. With Just those like big, diapers. Those big aluminum trays that sit over the racks. <gasps> and you know what? That's actually very clever. Then you don't have to do the dishes. That's true. Let's get that for me. <laughs> we can Disposable consider Disposable chafing dish. They're not particularly pretty. Well, neither is the food I make that I'll put in it. <laughs> Sorry, unless you help me. <laughs> All right, darling, I'll Thank try you. and give you some help. Okay. Now, you may be wondering what this little ring is all about. Looks like something from my car. It does rather, yes. doesn't it? The, the top to your air filter, perhaps? Yes. yes. Is that what that is? Yes. No, it's not. This is a ring that is used in this chafing dish to create a Mongolian hot pot. Oh. A, a, a what? 
Mongolian hot pot. A Mongolian hot pot. Yes. So Mongolian hot pot is really just what is referred to here in the States as beef fondue. Uh, the oil goes in here, and then uh, these little holes are for the uh, draining of the oil when you place the cooked items on them to cool after you've just boiled it in the oil. And uh, they can also be used to support little forks. You see these little divots are also for the forks. So, now, there are many different things that you can make in chafing dishes. Um, one of the, we discussed earlier, Swedish meatballs. You can also make uh, wonderful stews and... Uh, I thought you said you don't make them in the chafing dish, that you only use it to heat them up. You're right. You know, I should be saying can make for your chafing dish. Okay. Yes, and there are many lovely things that come out of chafing dishes. Now, if you don't have a fondue pot, your chafing dish can double for your fondue pot. However, you'll notice that if you see fondue pots around, they're usually quite a bit smaller. Because, uh, well, quite frankly, that's, that's a lot of fondue. That would be quite a bit of cheese fondue. So it would be nice for a party, but for, you know, dinner with four or five people, it would be a bit much. It's a lot of fondue. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what chafing dishes are all about. Well, how exciting. I've learned something new today. That's right. So are we, are we ready to go out and shop for your dish? Yes, I'm going to get my own chafing dish. Very good. And in two years, you'll find it in my basement, unopened. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And please come by BrinnyMaxwell.com for some chafing dish recipes. And uh, we're going to head out and pick up Mary Ellen's chafing dish. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye now. The spirit is moving. The spirit is moving. Traveling along. Traveling along. The spirit is going.